Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Yeah, so Colorado Springs Christian School first came um, when my wife and I were actually looking for a new school for our own children to attend. Uh, we were here for a job, not a job interview, but we were visiting to take a tour of the school and we were just really impressed with the environment, the culture, and just the way that uh, all the teachers not only were engaging and loved the students, but a lot of the teachers are alumni. And so the idea that you know, students coming to the school want to come back not only to, to be a light in this area, but also to teach and make that same kind of impact on their students kind of just sparked something in me. And so um, during the process, I ran into the chaplain of the school and we got to talking and, and he you know, really shared his passion and love for the school and we shared some commonalities in our, in our own histories. And so he, he told me to consider looking at the website to see if there was anything going on at Colorado Springs School, the Christian School that I can fill. And so I, I looked at the website and it, it's all been in history since then. What I really love about the vision of CSCS is the fact that we are working to make Christian education affordable so that it's accessible to as many people that want to have their kids attend school and get a good foundation of a Christian worldview in their lives. Uh, and with that vision, just making it affordable really touches my heart. Um, and the, the vision um, is, is catchy and you just know that it's true. It's something that's pulled from doctrine itself um, as we are called to take what we have given and freely give. And so if, as close as we can get to do that for our own community, the better. You know, and as far as the mission goes, you know, to bring uh, excellent education from a Christ-centered biblical perspective, you know, for lifelong service, that is, in my opinion, very crucial, that we first begin with Christ. Um, as we know in the book of Genesis, you know, we, we get the first picture of a teacher and a student when we see God commanding Adam and Eve to cultivate. I mean, they, they, had, they were just created. They didn't know what creation was or what everything was around them, so they had to be taught. And so we get that picture from, from the Lord himself in Genesis. It, and it actually begins with Genesis, like I just said, is helping the students to see God's fingerprint all throughout history. Um, today, with, with a lot of the, the noise that we hear in our culture, God is left out of history. And United States history is not about God, it's about the United States. But the reality is that the United States is all about the history of God working in the lives of men and women who came over here during the, the Great Reformation to find a place where they can freely worship the Lord their God. And that is how America was founded. And then all throughout the rest of the world history, it's nothing but a play of God's redemptive plan in the hearts of men everywhere. It's really finding a way to make that interesting to the young people, to the young minds. Um, and the only way you can really do that is to get away from the shiny object. A lot of people want to talk about World War II from a shiny perspective, or Vietnam from a shiny perspective, or women's suffrage movements from a shiny perspective. But really what they don't understand and what I try to incorporate in their, in their teaching is what, all, what steps took place before the big shiny object, before the big event that led up to that. And if we can get their minds, if we can help them and nurture them to think from that perspective, then it just becomes so much easier to begin with God because it all begins in that garden and it works its way through. So, I think first it begins with understanding your own story, where you come from, where the Lord has brought you from, right? Our conviction to serve and evangelize and disciple really comes from us being grateful to our Lord for saving us, right? We love because he has first loved us. And the, the, the act of evangelism occurs after the day of our salvation when we are commanded to go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all the commands that I have given. And the best part is that Jesus says, I will be with you. Throughout this process of teaching, throughout this process of, of discipling and equipping other people to come along the, the fold of Christ, I will be with you to the end of the ages. And so that's where teachers get their strength. Teachers get their source of confidence, knowing that it is Christ who is standing by my side as I am looking into these children. Um, because the reality is I don't know their hearts. I don't know all their circumstances and everything that they're going through, but I do know one thing. We all share something in common. We share, what we share in common is that we were made in the likeness and image of God. 
And with that comes a struggle between the enemy and Christ. And that struggle is the fact that these young, these young men and women, they need desperately to know about their Lord and Savior, Jesus. And so it's really building relationships with them all throughout school, which is, I love being here at CSCS because I get so many opportunities to pour into them, not only as a teacher, but also as a coach, um, coaching sports or attending basketball games or really being around them so that they feel comfortable and then hopefully by my, just by me being around, they might share some of what they're going through with me. And then by that, the Lord can tell me, there, Mike, there's where you need to go. That's the one you need to talk to. Here's what they're going through. Uh, the world around us every day, and I, I want to speak more specifically to education, right? Um, a lot of the, the you know, well-known educators of the world have said that the purpose of the education system is to make young men and women develop in character so that they can be accepted members of society. And that sounds great, right? Like we want to, we want to build their character. We want to develop them to be ethical, moral, and legal followers of the law. So they, but here's the problem. It says so they, can be, so they can become acceptable members of society. This is what the world is saying. The problem with this is their standard by which they measure our students, our young people, and us to whether we are acceptable is society itself. It's how, we, how well can we conform to society. If I will agree with society, I can then become an acceptable member of that society. That's problem number one. Problem number two is this word accepted. And that's where we come in. That's where the beauty of the gospel comes in. We don't have to work to be accepted. We are accepted only because we have put our faith and trust in, in Jesus Christ, and by his blood we are covered. Once we can get that to the students, once we can relay that message to the students, suddenly academics becomes joyful when they can see the glory of God in mathematics, when they can see the wonder and the creativity of God in science or in the arts or sports, and history is no longer boring and mundane, but it's actually really exciting because they get to see their creator working through the lives of other men and women. And now it gives them a hope. Will this same Lord work in my life? Will he do the same thing for me? And we here at CSCS are here to say yes. Not only, not only will he, but he is, even when you don't know it. One of the ways that I really appreciate what CSCS offers is partnership with parents and the community. There is an, ex there is an excellent emphasis on partnership. We see parents all the time. I can, I, I, I can teach a lesson from the Bible or from the history books and look outside my classroom door and see a mother and a father walking down the hall on their way to do some activity with the school or with their students, um, whether it's coaching, right? Parents can step in and coach and help come alongside the young men and women here. They can also serve in the capacity of volunteering at the school. Um, and then, of course, always, we, we talked about this earlier, right? We are, we are to freely give what has been given to us. But the Lord does provide us with providence, financial providence, that helps us make that affordable to the rest of the people in this community. Like I said earlier, we live in a culture that wants to tell young people that they have to work to be accepted. We see an increase in suicide. We see an increase in depression, an increase in self-harm in our young men, our young women and children, young children. And so the best, one of the best, one, a good way to get involved is if possible, financially give to CSCS. What that does is it helps us come alongside more people in our community and make Jesus known in, in Colorado Springs. Prayer support, um, not only for the teachers, um, just recently we had, we had things happening with a, a teacher and the whole community has come around and prayed and supported this family. And that's uh, every, every week our chaplain sends out a prayer, a prayer sheet that tells everybody what we can be praying for. And so as far as the community goes, the biggest impact that we can have from the prayer perspective is praying for our superintendent. He's the one going out in the community, reaching people, meeting with people, praying for our director of operations. She's constantly working and coming to the school and making sure that everything can run functionally. And all while there's attacks, there's the spiritual attack. The enemy does not like 
what's happening. He doesn't want to see this go forward. He wants us to be trapped in our culture. And so, um, but most importantly, praying for the students, praying that their hearts are prepared. The soil is ready to hear the gospel. So I didn't grow up. I didn't have an opportunity to hear any of this when I was growing up. Um, I grew up in the inner city streets of Chicago in the 80s and the 90s, came from a broken home. I didn't have a father. My mother was severely mentally ill. Uh, and for a while, my sister and I spent a stint in a foster care institution. And so we didn't have a place to go. We listened to the world, that idea that you had to be accepted. And so I sought acceptance everywhere. I sought it in friends, um, the local gangs, drugs, alcohol. Um, and I was doing all that by the time I was in middle school. And so um, not having that, not having an opportunity to hear what we get to talk about every day here at school, it, you know, it just made things a little bit more challenging for me growing up. And so, you know, by the time I was in high school, I, I decided to drop out and escape. I joined the Army. And uh, a few days after joining, you know, 9-11 happened. And so I would spend three tours in war. So when you add childhood, war, all the trauma, all the stuff that I was going through, I, was a, I wasn't in good shape as an adult. And so luckily I had a supportive wife and we, we got through those hard times. But what really, what really gives me drive to be here today is the fact that um, after all of that, my only, my only escape was an attempted suicide that failed. And I was pretty upset about that. You know, I was, I was upset at the fact that, you know, there's this, there's this God in the world that the, the nicest thing he could do for me was let me die. Instead of letting me live in all this pain and misery and everything I had been through. Um, and so when I looked at my wife one day and I said, you know what, I really don't think there's a God. Her heart just jumped within her and she just felt this strong conviction that we needed to go to church. <laughs> and so we went, she got us into church, uh, got us attending a church. And a couple of weeks later, it was a Christmas Eve service. You know, this tough, rough, tough guy coming from where I came from, being going to war and surviving, and um, I was broken. Just every, every part of me, all the pain just poured out of me in tears, and, and I surrendered my life to Christ. And the next day, I celebrated Christmas for the first time since I was a little boy. And, um, and my whole life turned around from that point. I switched schools. I, I stopped attending university at uh, the school I was at, and I, I switched it over to a Christian university on the East Coast, finished my bachelor's degree, um, entered into an MDiv program, finished my Master of Divinity, uh, started serving at the local prisons, worked at a, a rescue mission, helping the homeless community, uh, all the way to moving here, you know, um, and uh, I was invited to work with another Christian organization to start a um, public discussion forum that helps bring a Christian worldview to understand the cultural issues we are currently facing today and um, and became a pastor. But then there was always something missing. All of that, with all that salvation, Christ, all of it, there was something missing. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's our youth. It's remembering that despite it all, despite it all, everything, God had a purpose for everything I went through in life, everything. But despite it all, I still to this day wish I would have heard this good news. And so an opportunity was presented to me. Mike, you have a chance to be a light in the world of young people. You have a chance to bring the Christian worldview into this city. And it was offered to me by this school. And so I took it. And I just love being here every day. I don't come to work. I get to be with the students, share the gospel with them every day. They ask wonderful questions. The children these days are engaged. Social media has them uh, in everything. They're, they're politically minded. They ask so many questions about politics and presidential campaigns. This is middle school. They're highly engaged. They want to learn. They want to know. They want to ask very tough questions. And I am so excited every day to get to come here and share the answers, or at least the direction of where they need to go to find those answers, the scriptures. I love coming here because every student is different. Every student is different. And some of these children are going through some very difficult times, very difficult times. But, our, but this school, its process of going, help, helping, helping a student be restored after making a mistake or after falling short, 
is encouraging. It's encouraging. And so I, I just really appreciate the fact that Colorado Springs Christian School has a heart of service, but more importantly, a heart of restoration. And they, we, don't, we don't expect the children to be perfect. We don't share the message that they can be. We embrace the fact that they're not. And we, we, it truly has a heart of service to the kids. In fact, one of the cool things, and I don't know if it's gonna make it in here, but uh, first thing we were told at an at a early briefing was, if a student comes to you and says, I want to know more, if there's an opportunity that comes, you find somebody else to go to your class and you stay with that student and you teach them what they want to know about Jesus, because that is why we are here. And that to me is just mind blowing. We'll find someone else to sit in your class. Don't ask someone else to sit with this student. They asked you. So you stop what you're doing, get another teacher or faculty member, staff, volunteer to go sit with your class because they want to hear about Christ from someone they know and trust, and that's you. And for us to have that opportunity, that freedom, that weight that comes off of us to just freely give the Word of God to a, to a student is palpable. It's amazing. Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life to serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome.